Kittle and Photoshop, can they coexist? Can they get along? Well, I would argue that they can. In fact, at my previous job, when the bulk of what I was doing was graphics for churches, and I didn't want to have a subscription to like a background remover or an elements service like Envato or whatnot, money was a little thin. Honestly, it kind of still is sometimes. But Kittle was extremely helpful, and we've seen some comments from some of you that like to start a design in Kittle and then maybe finish it off in Photoshop doing some of those more beefy effects and stuff that you can't quite yet do in Kittle, though we are working very hard to make that not the case. So today I actually have one of my side clients that needs a sermon series branding project done that I'm going to, like we said, I'm gonna start it in Kittle and finish it off in Photoshop. So I'm going to just start a new project and most of these are always 1920 by 80 and then they'll break them out into some various social sizes and whatnot, but it's just a standard like 16, 9, 1920 by 80 canvas. Now this series is called The Word. It's literally just about the importance of the word or the Bible. So I am going to go to the images and I'm gonna search for a nice Bible that I can cleanly remove the background from. Maybe something like this is kind of cool. It has like a nice angle. I do not like cheesy, chintzy church stuff. Like I like stuff to look really cool. It may struggle down here. So we're gonna see if we need to pick a different photo. We can. Yeah, that's not the best. So we're gonna pick a different photo. We could also just use the image generator though. That'd be cool. Let's see, open Bible on a white background. If you've seen some other videos where I use the background remover tool, I love to say on a white background just because I know I'm going to use the background remover. And when the object is just on a background that is just white, it is not having to compete or fight with other entities on the same plane, then it's a lot easier to remove. It's actually pretty cool, very dynamic, very rustic, beat up. I don't hate that. I wish it was like, from like just a forward angle. We're gonna remove the background from that, but we're also going to generate another one. Didn't quite get it here, so that might not actually work. I'll just go and hide it. It's kind of the same angle. I want something a little different. Front facing. Ah. Very, very cool. I actually really like that. It's like super royal and whatnot. I'm gonna use the background remover and we're just gonna make that small. That will also help with like it not, you know, if I had more time and I might do another pass of it, I would pick one that actually, or find another image that actually shows like, you know, the text of like the actual Bible because you can kind of tell that this is not like actual scripture, but for the purposes of just showing you how this goes together, I'm gonna do this. So I'm going to pick like a nice brown color similar to that, just slightly, ooh, like that's kind of like royal color, like a nice bronze. Ooh, I, I like that. It's almost like a soft brown. I feel like I have a shirt that's like exactly that color. I do something like that. And then I like, we talk a lot about how like the word breathes, the word is living. And so I want to like have life coming out of this. So I might do like kind of a collage style thing here. Let's see what we can come up with. Let's go to images. Let's actually do image generator. Let's do palm leaves on a white background and see what that gives us. Uh, let's just say palm leaf. Leaf on a white background. It's pretty cool, let's remove the background from this. And we'll put this in front. And I might duplicate this, size that down. I get like that and I kind of want to 
make that more vibrant. Yeah, that pops a little more to me. And I want to also add just some, some color in some way. I'm thinking of like colors that would like really pop on this. There's gonna be something in the yellow category for sure. Let's center that up with that circle. And then I could bring this one to the front. And then we'll do like some different size variations of this. To the back. Just something random and cool. It doesn't always have to mean something, at least to me. Sometimes it gets rejected though, because they're like, I don't know what this means. Let's do another image generation. Let's do, I wanna do something like botanical-esque. So maybe like lavender and eucalyptus on a white background. That's what it is. I'm, I'm gonna say that's what it is. I kinda want this to be slightly darker. A little more contrast maybe. Okay, very, very cool. To the back. Maybe I'll get rid of this leaf and have this one. Actually, yeah, let's get rid of the palm leaves and just do the lavender and the eucalyptus. This is the design process. And then maybe the smaller one could be in front so it's less distracting. And then this one could be in the back. Struggling with the placement of these. Also, undo works a lot better now, so that's helpful. I think I like the placement of this the most. Cool. I wonder what would happen if I just like. I can tell that I might not love this. It seems too repetitive. Yeah, failed experiment, I don't like that. I like the nice, simple, and clean. I may not be loving the color of these. Do something like that. Or, could also just get rid of them all around and just do something way more simple. I liked the placement of that. Cause I'm thinking like title here and maybe like text or something below. Lord. Yeah, let's do something like that. So this is the, essentially this is the start of my project. Very minimal, not anything crazy going on here really at all. Make sure that's centered up. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to export these layers individually. So the background and then the flowers and then the Bible so that I can like tweak them differently. And then I'm gonna add the title in Photoshop as well. Okay, over to Photoshop. I've got my layers, they're a little mixed up. Uh, put this on top and then that one right there. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go for my title. So I'm just gonna add some text here. I'm thinking like a nice wide font. So I'm gonna use Druk, which is one of my personal favorite fonts. If you own it or you wanna get it, you can also upload it to Kittle too, to use it in Kittle. The word, we're gonna see if that's too long. I think that's too long. It needs to be more condensed. Let's do Druk Super. And then I like mixing fonts. So I might do something like this. And then my pro tip when mixing fonts with script and other things is the capital letters, make them bigger, like make them significantly bigger so that they kind of like it feels more natural and it's not like in line with everything else, but it feels like it pokes out some. Another tip here, when I zoom in, there's this like very awkward space right here that might catches my eye. I don't love that. So I'm just gonna space that out a little bit to let that breathe. And then I could close this gap some. Cool. 
what I like to do is size the title up, make it nice and big, and then put elements in front of it. So it would look like this. And then we need some other text. And I'm just gonna go very simple, Archivo, which is already in Kittle. And we'll left align that. In case we wanna make changes, it'll stay like the same. Alignment to our title. And so what I'm looking for here now is just the space like on the top, bottom, and then like the sides to kind of like be around the same, like occupy the same space. And let's make that right justified. And I'm just going to add an ampersand. And another thing I like to do is add lines to make it feel more dynamic. Something like that. I like that. I'm going to group these three things together. Make sure that's centered up. So one thing that I'm like, I definitely like the way that this works in Kittle over Photoshop is like when you have things group and you select it, it grabs the whole group. Yes, I know that there is a way to select the whole group automatically, I get it. Yes, I know that you can do that in Photoshop. It's just like, it's annoying to have to bounce back and between and forth. Like I would rather it always just select the group. I think I want to like, See, I'm telling you, stretch fonts are gas. Like, I love that. And I'm gonna add some more dynamic to this by giving it a blur to make it. See, I know there are, there are other ways of doing this. This is just the way that I do it. I like to just copy the layer and then make the layer behind it blurred like that, and then the text layer, what I'm gonna do to make it kind of gritty is I'm going to add an outer glow and then it kind of gives it that gritty, grittiness. I'm gonna do the same thing here. You need to back off the blur when the characters are smaller because that doesn't look nearly as good as this does. It doesn't actually look like it's neon. Add that same outer glow. Yeah, that's sick. And then the last thing that I'm gonna do is add a texture. This is just a texture, like a black market texture or something. And my favorite is to use textures that have black background and then use the screen or lighten or screen or lighter color blending modes. It's all, it's one of these five. Color dodge is actually pretty great because it leaves the saturation, the vibrance of that gold. Sometimes I just like, I'll be like, ah, I like it, it's not grainy enough. And I'll just duplicate the layer. Maybe that's like a tad much. So I'll back it off a little bit. Actually, no, let's just full send it. I wonder what it looks like if you rotate it around. That's actually really, really nice. I like that. Make sure that it's not catching those edges, some white paper edges that I don't want it to catch. Lord, that's a, a lot. I like it though. I'm just gonna dial it off. It just feels like super dynamic to me. So like, yeah, this is like literally what I would do on a daily basis was I would integrate Kittle into my workflow to where like some things, yes, it was the thing that I was finishing projects in. But most of the time when I was working with clients that needed specifically like a Photoshop file, like that's what they wanted, I would build the layers in Kittle because it was just faster and like the availability of the elements was easier in the background remover, all the tools, the AI was all in one spot. And I would just 
build it mostly and then export all the layers, put them in Photoshop and then finish them so that I could send them to the client with all of the layers and whatnot. And they don't complain that they can't have like their specific file type or whatever. I do these projects where like I'll start something in Kittle and I'll like finish it in Photoshop because maybe I just need like a little more beefy raster effects. Like raster is just when things are not vector, like when they're just actual pixels, you can do more effects with them and whatnot. Drop a comment down below if you think it would be helpful to be able to export .psd files and or upload .psd files to Kittle. Some people do it the reverse, where they'll start something in Photoshop and then they'll put it in Kittle, which is, some of y'all are violent. That's really, really cool if you're doing that. But yeah, comment down below if you want the ability to download a .psd or a .ai or Illustrator file to Kittle. If you think that would be helpful, let us know. Like this video, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.